Retro Episode 5. Da 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 the original da 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 da, da patrol. That is a, that's the sisterhood of da da patrol is what we're doing in this episode. But in, in our last episode, you know, we had the whole thing with the zombies and you know with the, the Z word that shall no longer be named. So in this particular episode, everybody everybody's going through like their own little like personal situation. Uh, right out the gate, Jane, is, she walked in on a therapy session where one of her personas was actually giving counsel to the girl Kay. And they found out, well, Jane found out that Kay is at a point now where she wants to uh, take over the body and go out into the world, which is a little awkward for everybody because she's never done that before because all the different personalities, they've always been the ones to basically take over and do stuff on the outside world. But like Jane pointed out to the therapist, this actually is the girl's body. Like this is Kay's body. Like we're just occupying her body. And the therapist's whole thing was it's like, yeah, but she's still a child. Like she still has the mind of a child. So even if she just wants to go get brand new shoes, like her going out there, you know, with the mind of a child, isn't the greatest idea, you know, in the world. And, you know, she strongly advised against it. But Jane thought it was a good idea because the girl was just like, oh, I want new shoes. I want to try on some shoes. So she was just like, look, it's not gonna hurt nobody to let her do it. But they're going back and forth with the whole thing about what to decide. Cyborg's dad ended up turning the grid back on. Booyah. And, you know, now Cyborg is happy because like he's back in business. He called his dad and his dad was like, well, I don't want my son out there with no protection. So he's just like, yo, he's back in business, baby. Cyborg is back. Cliff, he ended up taking like some medication for his brain problem. And Cyborg told him that he said, when you take the medication, you're only supposed to take like a couple of pills and a little bit of liquid because the, the medication was going directly into your brain. So he was like, we don't want to do it. We don't want to overdo it. Cliff ended up actually ODing on the pills. He put so much of that stuff into his brain that he ended up getting high and like going a little crazy and like wigging out a little bit. Larry's still dealing with the thing in his body, which like I said, I you know in the last review, like I said, it was basically like a baby, like a negative spirit baby. And I was, I feel like I've been proven right with that based on what happens at the end of the episode. And Rita, she's still talking to Madame Rouge. Madame Rouge ends up showing Rita the footage of when she was dancing, you know, like back in 1941. And then she pointed out to Rita and showed Rita in the corner, you know, behind that glass thing while she was doing the dancing. So now Rita's whole thing is she's like, oh my God, like I'm a time traveler. <laughs> she's like, I'm Rita Farr, time traveler extraordinaire. Madame Rouge basically laughed and then she was like, bitch, you ain't no time traveler. <laughs> but now Rita's convinced you know, that she's, a, that she, that eventually, I guess like in the future or whatever, she becomes a time traveler because when Rita saw herself push her into the room and seal the door for her to die, she assumes that's her from the future or her from a different point in time. What Rita doesn't realize yet, because at this point, nobody realizes yet that Madame Rouge has the ability to shape shift into different people. So Rita thinks that's her and Rita thinks she's a time traveler. She, she, you know, she grew, for lack of a better term, she grows up to become a time traveler. So now she's all like giddy and everything and she's trying to figure it out. Madame Rouge, on the other hand, she brings the whole team together and then she's just like, oh, you know, I realized why I'm here. She's like, I'm here to take down the, the sisterhood of Dada. And everybody's like, well, what the hell is that? She's like, the sisterhood of Dada is a crazy organization and I need to kill them. But she said that I can't kill them because if I find them, they'll spot me on site and they'll take me out. So she asked the Doom Patrol, she was like, oh, I need you to kill the Sisterhood of Dada for me. And then they start laughing. They're like, we ain't killing them. <laughs> you know, but she ended up, like, you know, along with like, she ended up talking them into it and they decided to at least go down there and investigate the Sisterhood of Dada. Meanwhile, Rita stayed behind and her and Madame Rue stayed at the mansion and they both got drunk together. So now when the whole group goes down to investigate, to investigate the Sisterhood of Dada, they go into like some fog mist. And when they go into the mist, when they go into the fog, they end up meeting different people because their whole plan was they were gonna infiltrate the sisterhood of Dada in order to take them down from the inside. So when Cyborg went through the mist, he ended up seeing like this other black dude who had a bicycle <laughs> like attached to his back. And when he was talking to the guy, he was like, who are you? And he was like, who are you? And he was like, I'm Cyborg. And he was like, why are you? And then he was like, well, I'm Cyborg because I'm here to save the world and I'm here to protect people who can't protect themselves. And he was like, that sounds like a bunch of pre-rehearsed, pre you know, like pre-rehearsed bullshit. He was like, why are you? He wanted like an actual answer. And then the guy, he was like, then, then Cyborg was like, well, well, screw you, pal. He was like, why are you? And then he said, I am because you know, my dad made me this way or like, you know, I'm a product of my environment and my trials and my tribulations. Everything that I went through turned me into this. This is who I am. And he's like, who are you? And Cyborg really couldn't get, he, I don't think, I guess Cyborg didn't really understand the question 
and then he ended up getting angry and like cursing the dude out and like throwing and like throwing a fit over the whole thing because he was getting frustrated. Cliff went into a situation where he was talking to some Asian girl in a glass case, and, and you know he basically like spilled his heart out to her about why you know he wants to get better because he's like before he didn't care about his life, but he's like now I care because I got a grandson I gotta take care of and I got a family I gotta worry about. So he pretty much poured his heart out to you know like to that girl, Larry. Larry didn't go in the mist, but the mist came to him. And when Larry was was engulfed in the mix in the mist, he ended up seeing his son walking through the mist. And I think it was the one that died, because like I think one of his sons had passed away. I'm not sure if that's the one that passed away or not, but he ended up seeing his son again. And when Larry saw his son, he ended up following him. And then his son got attacked, and you know, and everything. And then Larry had to pull him out of the mist. And then when he pulled him out of the mist, he got him back on the bus to bring him back to the mansion. Jane, on the other hand, when she went in, she met up with the person who's actually orchestrating the whole thing. And the woman, the woman gave her her real name, but she actually said, she was like, you can call me the fog. Because <laughs> she's like, everybody calls me the fog. And Jane told her, she was like, oh, I want to join the sisterhood of Dada. And then the woman was like, why? Who? And then here goes this question again. She's like, who are you? And then she's like, oh, I'm Jane. You know, she's like, I protect the girl. She was like, no, but who are you, you know, without the girl? The Fog even said that she separated Jane and Kay from the rest of the underground. Because she was like, oh, when you're in the Fog, you're in my mind now. So she was just like, oh, we're in your brain. She was like, yeah, she was like, all of you are in your mind, or in my mind. And she said, I'm currently... She's like, I'm currently keeping like your idiot friends at bay just so you and I can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So she was trying to basically find out, you know, try to get Jay to tell Jane to tell her who she is. But the fog's ultimate goal was she wanted K and she wanted K to stay. And she asked, you know, and then Jane kind of, she was just like, you know what, I don't trust this. She told Kay, she was like, let's go. And then Kay, and then Kay threw a temper tantrum, but she was like, I'm not leaving, I'm not going. And then Jane got into an argument with the girl trying to get her to leave, which then prompted the other members of the underground to show up like hammerhead in them. They started beating on the glass, trying to get into the room, like the candy room that they were in, just so they can, just so they can go get Kay. And then in the end, like, you know, let's say Kay had a heart, Kay was like throwing like a childish like tantrum over it. The fog was just like, oh, you can't escape me, Jane. This is where the girl belongs is where everybody belongs and then you know they, they eventually they ended up getting Kay out of there and then like you know everybody woke up and they were back on the bus again they went through such like a dramatic like traumatizing experience and they even helped like Larry get his son back you know they all went through like some own personal thing they got back to the mansion and then when they got back to the mansion you know Rita's whole thing was she was like oh so how did it go she's like you know what about the, she's like how did we take down the sisterhood and then they were like yo we didn't and then Cliff was just like yo I don't want to deal with that shit again Jane was like yo I don't want no parts and everybody was basically like I don't want no parts of it and then Cyborg was just like yo fuck the sisterhood of Dada fuck Madame Rouge you know she was like fuck he was like fuck the fog <laughs> you know like everything like they were just all pissed off because it was like an emotionally like you know draining experience for them and now all of them you know like have their own personal like beef and their own personal problems they got to go through cyborg is upset because he didn't like being asked the question who he really is because in his mind he feels like he knows who he is cliff was just like well i'm trying to deal with my problems but i ain't gone today so you know cliff just ended up taking more pills and more pills and he ended up looking at like pop-up internet porn <laughs> larry you know, he was, you know, he was with his son. He was trying to like, you know, like nurse his son back to health. And then you saw on the back of his neck, the glowing bump that was on the back of his neck, which is basically a negative spirit baby, <laughs> you know, which is eventually going to like grow into his body, you know? And then Jane's whole thing was Jane tried to go talk to Kay. And then the other members of the underground wouldn't let Jane talk to Kay because they were just like, oh, the girl just needs separation from you for a while. Basically just like, yo, we don't trust you, bitch. <laughs> but you know, because of what you put her through, because like the, the, the therapist even said, she was just like, oh, she was like Kay, she's like, Kay isn't my problem. I can handle the girls, you know, tantrums. She was like, but my problem is you because she was like, I don't know what to do with you. And then there was a scene where Jane woke up. And when Jane woke up, I don't think that was Jane. I believe that when Jane woke up, when I believe that when Jane woke up, that was Kay. And in the next episode, Kay's the one who's actually going to be, you know, controlling the body. And she's going to be the one walking around. They're going to have to do. And like the rest of the crew is going to have to deal with Kay in the next episode instead of Jane. And Jane's probably going to be fighting the other girls in the underground just so she can take over as primary again. But Jane did say she wanted Kay to actually, you know, like have a day where she can be the person controlling the body. So I don't see why that would cause conflict either. But I don't know. Like, but basically that, that's Kay. Like Kay took over. So we're going to see who Kay is in the next <laughs> in the next episode, which is basically her body to begin with, you know, so. So that's that's actually like I said it's not a bad thing like it's her right the same way how like you know 
Dorothy, like the Doom Patrol is living in Dorothy's house. So any like technically speaking, like Dorothy, you know, they work for Dorothy now, now that Niles, <laughs> now that now that Niles is gone. But we'll see what happens. You know, we'll definitely see what happens. And then finally, after Rita and Madame Rouge got drunk, Rita basically, she was just like, oh, Rita Fall, you know, time travel extraordinaire. She's like, that's my destiny. And then Madame Rouge was like, bitch, she was like, that's not who you supposed to be. She's like, I've only known you for 48 hours and you ain't no time traveler. You ain't no hero, bitch. You ain't shit. <laughs> and then Rita got upset. She ended up going, you know, because remember, like, she had stole the piece that, you know, that stopped the time machine from working. So Rita went back. She got the piece. She put the time machine back together. Rita jumped in the time machine, and then she proceeded to time travel to God knows where. It could, you know, to prove that Rita Farr, time travel extraordinaire, is who he actually is. And she doesn't realize yet that it's not her from the future or from the past or whatever. She's not a time traveler because we still haven't figured out yet that Madame Rouge can also shapeshift into different people. And I'm trying to wonder when Madame Rouge gets her memories back because Rita's gonna lose her memory in the next episode because she went through the time machine as well. But it's gonna be a crazy wild adventure and I look forward to seeing it. So that was it. And thank you for tuning in. Like I said, I'm very, I, I, I'm still waiting for the Brotherhood, of, the Brotherhood of Evil to come back, but I'm very interested in this Madame Rouge Rita storyline because I personally feel that Madame Rouge is just a shapeshifter but I still haven't figured out why she keeps shape-shifting into Rita. I don't think that Rita is a time traveler. I don't, I, I don't think that Madame Rouge is Rita Farr. I don't think that, like, I don't, like, that's kind of the direction that they, they're, they're trying to make us think, but I don't think that. I just feel like Rita popped up where she popped up at certain points in time because she does steal the time machine, but once Madame Rouge gets her memories back, then we'll find out why, why Niles hated her so much and what her plan is and what her whole situation is in Gulf of the Brotherhood of Evil. But we got to see and find out. So leave your comments and questions below. What do you think about the whole storyline with Madame Rouge and, and, you know, and Rita Farr? Like, where do you think this goes? What do you think this, is the actual situation? Who do you think Madame Rouge really is and why she keeps turning into Rita Farr whenever, whenever she shapeshifts? And share your thoughts and questions and everything. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up on Instagram. Click the notification bell so you get notified when my other videos pop up. I got a Comic-Con video coming up as well. You know, check that out. Definitely give that a thumbs up and a like, and we'll see where everything goes from here in next week's episode. So thanks for tuning in, guys. So until next week, the Dada Patrol, take care. And about this, peace.